Hey all you super players out here, this is Ben Lodice, aka 5 Buck Lunch, coming at you with a top 10 list for the new Draft Box 4 that releases later this week. We're going to take a look at some of the new cards that are coming out. I know a lot of them are a little underpowered because the set's supposed to be a draft set, but there are several cards in here that I think will be see play and affect the game as a whole. Uh, before I start, I just want to remind everybody that my channel has a giveaway going on. All you got to do is like and subscribe, and once we hit 200 subscribers, I'm going to raffle off a box of Assault of the Sand. So like, subscribe, get in on that. So number one, the first card we have here. Oh, these aren't in any particular order, by the way. These are just top 10 cards that will be good in the meta. Uh, Keflo, Roar of Destruction. Red card costs five. Double strike. For two, active battle. If you have four more energy, you could choose two alien cards in your battle area other than this card and return it to your hand. Then play this card from your hand. You can't play any battle cards for the duration of the turn. And then auto, when this comes into play, choose up to one of your opponent's battle cards. It gets minus 20,000 power for the duration of the turn. So there's two reasons that this is good. First off, all the Universe 6 cards are aliens. So you can use it to return your one drop, Kale and Kefla and Khalifa and recycle their search effects. Also, it is an active battle, so you can do it during your opponent's turn in order to get rid of an attacking battle card. Just a really solid card. We'll definitely see play in Universe 6 decks, even though it's off color. Next up, we have Jiren, Shackles of the Past. One drop red card has barrier. Only one Jiren, Shackles of the Past, can be in play in your battle area. Auto when there are 10 or more battle cards in your drop area with exactly 10,000 power. At the start of your main phase, for the duration of the turn, this card gets 25,000 power, double strike, and dual attack, and your opponent can't activate counter skills unless they place two cards from their hand in their drop area as an additional cost. So this card kind of has a lot going with it. There's there's a big, uh, a bunch of cards that interact with having 10k power Battle cards either on the board or in the discard pile in this set, and I think this is the best one of them. It becomes a one-drop 30k double strike dual attack, which is very, very good, obviously. Uh, but the key part about this is the fact that counter skills are really, really powerful right now. They're kind of taking over the game a little bit, and there's a lot of really good counter skills in this set as well. So counter skills are going to be very, very important going forward in the meta. And this makes it so that for just permanently, your opponent can't activate counter skills unless they discard two cards, which makes them extremely subpar. So yeah, I think there will be a deck going around this card going forward. What exactly is in it? I'm not really sure yet. We'll have to see. But this, power, this ability is just too powerful on a one drop to not make any impact. Next up, we have Ultra Instinct Son Goku the Unstoppable. Uh, blue for cost. Counter play, play this card. Counter attack, play this card. So what that means is you can either counter it when they play a guy or counter it when they attack. Permanent, this card's skills can't be negated in any area by your opponent's skills. When you play this card, choose up to one of your opponent's battle cards, ignoring barrier, return it to your owner's hand, and if it's your opponent's turn, draw one card. So this is a real interesting card. We're going to have to see going forward whether this is good enough to play or not because it's very expensive. It's very expensive because it costs four and there's no way to reduce the cost, but it has an extreme amount of utility. You can use it against counter plays and counter attacks and it removes anything ignoring barrier. So it's a whole lot of utility. It might see decks in play like Janimbo where you can keep four mana open or possibly uh, some other form of stall deck. It's a very strong card with a lot of utility, but we'll have to see whether four is just too much to pay for it or not. It's kind of hard to make a call on that right now. Next up, we have Piccolo Assimilated Ability. It's a four cost green card with barrier. Active battle once per turn, bond two. Choose one of your opponent's battle cards with energy cost of five or less and KO it. If you KO it a card, draw a card. So this card is insane. Uh, I think this might be the best card in the set. It kind of gets my vote. It's green, which kind of hurts it because green's kind of in a rough spot. But uh, it has a four drop with barrier, and it's activate battle once per turn, meaning you could do it on both players' turn during battle. Bond two, so all you need to do is have one other character on the board. Choose one of your opponent's battle cards, five or less, which is a lot of anything that isn't like Gogeta 7 or Ken Goku. And 
I just KOs it and draws a card. This is just insane. It's it's so good. It it pretty much blows every other like destruction on board card out of the water. Um, any deck that plays uh, any Shenron deck is going to love this card. Uh, it's just a really strong card all around and is definitely going to see play. Remote Serious Bomb. Active main, your opponent chooses one of their battle cards and sends it to their own, its owner's warp. Uh, so this is a one one drop black card, extra card. Uh, it's really, really strong. It'll be strong in any meta where people rely on like one big bomb to just be on the field. I think this has a lot of potential, especially against like Toa decks where you're probably going to be forcing them to get rid of their Mira or their uh, Vegeta that cycles back their cards. Not as strong, obviously, in go wide formats against decks like U7. I just think this is going to be a very good side card just because it's so cheap and it's black so you can side it in any deck. King Vegeta, the Majestic Ruler. Uh, this is one of the cards a lot of people were talking about. It's a six drop yellow card. Uh, all it does is negate the skills of all other battle cards. So basically you just plop this on the board and it just stops everything. There's not much. It's really hard to get rid of as the other thing because most destruction revol revolves around battle cards. So I can very much see this being a go-to card for Shenron decks that want to wish it in. Could also be good in some sort of ramp deck. It's just a really, really good card and a very dangerous card to have in the meta. It's also going to be cited a lot for Shenron mirror matches because you can use it to stop cards like Gogeta 7. Great Ape Sun Goku Saiyan Instincts. This is a 2-drop yellow card. Active main for 2. Send this card from your drop area to your warp. Draw 2 cards. So this is a really, really interesting card and it's going to be a really heavy side card for pretty much everybody. Uh, I think this is Bandai's way of trying to counteract all the hand discarding cards that we're seeing, uh, be it in uh, this set or the previous sets. Basically, all you have to do is pay two and warp it from your drop area to draw two cards. Now, this gets very interesting with things like black leaders that lets you put cards back from your warp. It's also very good against Janimba, things that mill, because it allows you to just get advantage for free. And yeah, it's really, really good against things that discard out of your hand. Super 17 Power Distilled. Uh, six drop green, dual attack, permanent. If there are 10 or more non-black cards in your drop area, reduce the energy cost of this card in your hand by two, so it becomes a four drop. Choose one card in your drop area and send it to your warp. When this card attacks, choose up to one green extra card from your drop area, add it to your hand. Then your opponent chooses one card in their hand and sends it to their warp. So this card's really good. Uh, the fact that it can just become a four drop and anything that bursts, uh, for example, the Goku leader that bursts and then discards to draw to would be very good in. It's kind of not as good in traditional Android decks, which is interesting because they don't mill a whole lot and you need to get... 10 non-black battle cards in your discard pile. But the broke thing about this is you can just keep cycling back your negates over and over again, and there's not a whole lot they can do about it. Another important thing to point out is that since it has dual attack and the auto isn't once per turn, essentially every turn you're grabbing back two green extra cards and then forcing them to warp two cards out of their hand. Just very, very strong card, especially for what essentially could be a four drop. Broly free at last. Four drop green card. Auto, place this card in its owner's drop area. At the end of the battle after this card attacked, you may choose one green battle card with Broly in its character name and an energy cost of six in your drop area and play it. If you played a card, you can't play battle cards for the duration of the turn. So this card has a lot of options. You can use it to get either Broly or Broly BR as I understand it. We'll have to see when the problem solving uh, card text comes out. They don't release that till after the set. But since it has it, the Broly in brackets, you should be able to get it so long as Broly's in the name. But even if you can't, grabbing the 6-drop Broly that discards two random cards on turn 4 is very, very good. Also, another important thing to note, uh, since it puts it in play, you can then attack with the card you put in play. So 4-drop, you get to put Broly down, attack, then you can bring in 6-drop Broly, take two cards of their hand, attack with that, double strike 30k. Just a very strong card. We'll see if it 
Broly's kind of been on the downslide for a while. We'll see if this card might be good enough to bring it back up. Either way, though, it's a very interesting new card. And lastly, we have Super Saiyan Vegeta Exploiting Weakness. It's a 5-drop red card. Counterplay, play this card. Permanent, if your leader card is red, reduce the energy cost of this card in your hand by 2, so it becomes a 3-drop. When you play this card, choose all of your opponent's battle cards, and they get minus 20k power for the duration of the turn. If it's your opponent's turn, choose your, up to one of your leader cards, and it gets plus 5,000 power for the duration of the turn. So there's kind of a lot on this card. So it's a counterplay for three, assuming you play a red leader, which you're pretty much always going to be if you're playing this card. You get to negative 20k one of their guys, and give yourself a Senzu Bean for the duration of the turn. For All of that for three energy. This seems really, really good good uh we'll, we'll have to see if three energy is too much i don't think it is i think three to four is kind of the area where it can kind of become good again uh i can definitely see this seeing play in uh ramp gogeta and i can see this seeing play in uh prison frieza this this card is basically everything prison frieza wants in a card it's uh five cost so you can play it but it only actually costs three so it gives you a really good turn three play to kind of shut your opponent down. Uh, this is another example of kind of an overtune counterplay. We've been getting these a little bit uh, lately. And yeah, I think this card's going to be very, very strong as well. This and the Piccolo, I think, are probably the two strongest cards in the set. So yeah, that should give you a good idea. Uh, this Thursday, or I think the draft box comes out Thursday or Friday. Uh, whenever your store runs an event, please go in, support your local store, and... Pick up some of these cards, go out there, play some super, have some fun.